In this video, I'm going to give you my top five optimization techniques that I used in my game Llama Survival to boost the FPS from nearly unplayable on my powerful PC to a solid 60 FPS on a mobile device. Hey, Chris here from Llama Academy, here to help you, yes, you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Optimization is a pretty weird topic to try to do a tutorial on because everybody's game is different. Everybody needs to look at different places to do their optimization. Some of the tips I'm going to give you today are widely applicable and will provide a benefit to your FPS. But some of them, depending on your game type, may be not applicable. That's why it's a little bit weird because there's so many different optimization techniques. You really need to inspect that profiler to see where's your FPS going and where can you optimize. So the number one tip I'm going to give you is to use the profiler. The profiler is your main tool when you're trying to find out where's your FPS going, how much memory is my application using, and this kind of information that you need to know where to focus your efforts. Unity gives us some okay documentation on how to use the profiler. I'm just gonna go over some quick basics though because really the profiler is pretty complicated and there's a lot to know about it. So depending on when you watch this, either there'll be a card on the screen, link in the description to that video, or if you're watching it right when this comes out, I don't have that video yet. For me, usually the CPU is the bottleneck. So that's usually the first place that I look before I look at anything else. In the CPU section, you can see exactly how much time is being spent on each type of task. And from there, you can optimize, okay, I'm spending a lot of time on scripts, dive in a little bit and see which scripts are taking up the most time. That kind of gives you the direction of, okay, so this script is taking a long time, what's happening in that script, and then you can optimize that script. Maybe animation is taking a long time. In that case, there's some tips that I'm gonna give you in this video, how you can work on lowering that animation overhead. Again, I don't wanna go too much in the profiler, so just number one tip, use that profiler. For tip number two, batch, batch, batch. In Unity, you can view the number of batches, draw calls, set pass calls, all these things in the rendering section of the profiler. We're going to talk specifically about the draw calls here because the more objects you can batch together into a single draw call lowers the amount of overhead that's happening between the CPU and the GPU. That's the processor and the video card. Each draw call is essentially the processor telling the video card, hey, please draw these objects into my scene. And there's some latency between when the processor tells the video card to do that and when the video card can actually do that. So the lower of number of those that we have, the higher FPS can go. If we have thousands of draw calls, that's every single frame, thousands of times the processor has to tell the video card, draw this, draw this, draw this, draw this, and that really lowers your FPS. Especially if you're like me and you're targeting mobile platform, it doesn't handle that very well. On a desktop application, this is a little bit less of an issue, but there's still a lot of performance to be gained if you still do the batching. I had something like 2,500 draw calls and still could get hundreds of FPS in a previous game that I did, but that was really unoptimized. I've told you to batch objects, but how do you batch objects? In Unity, if you mark in the inspector that an object is batching static and it shares a material with other objects in the relative area that are also marked batching static, Unity will do an okay job at trying to combine these meshes so they can be drawn in a single draw call. Doing it this way relies on Unity to do the optimization for you and leaves a lot to be desired. Remember that for an object to be batched, it needs to have the same material and thus also the same shader and either needs to be marked batching static so that way Unity will try to do that for you or you need to combine those meshes together because let's say that we have like 100 buildings. Maybe we made our own cool modular asset pack to build our own buildings. We have now thousands of objects in the scene that all share the same material and same shader. But that wall or that building is made with hundreds of different objects because I've got windows, I've got wall sections, I've got corner pieces. Unity will try to combine a bunch of those for you, but what you can do is manually combine those meshes together yourself and that will make it so we know exactly all of these can be drawn in a single draw call. The process to doing this, some people maybe say it's straightforward. I couldn't understand it when I was first working on this. So I ended up buying an asset from the asset store. It was $5, it's simple mesh combine. And that worked pretty well for me. I'm not getting paid from that asset creator, but I did find it to be really useful. There's an affiliate link down in the description if you wanna check that one out. What this does is allows us to, in the inspector, select the objects we want to combine together, click a button to combine those meshes. And if we realize that, oh, we, we can combine more, or maybe the way that we combine these didn't work out so well, we can undo that operation still in the editor. And once we've played around and found out the way that we want it to be, we can export that then as an OBJ file or a .asset file, so that way it's not baked into the scene. And I found that to be a really useful feature because whenever I was combining my buildings, for example, in Llama Survival, some of those buildings I needed to be able to fade out because they block line of sight to the player. 
And if I had too many buildings together that were batched all in the same draw call, whenever I faded out that one building that was blocking the player, you'd actually fade out all of the buildings because they were all the same mesh. Whenever you're combining these meshes, really consider which objects should be batched together and weigh that against that performance benefit of getting one less draw call. The last thing I wanna say about combining meshes is make sure that you export that combined mesh into an asset file because when it's baked into the scene, it makes your loading a lot slower. At some point, my scene files got inflated to like 30, 40 megabytes because I had a lot of duplicated mesh data in the scene and it made it take a really long time to load each scene. After I exported all of these and reused the same meshes where they could be reused, it lowered the scene size to under a megabyte and the loading became almost instantaneous. Tip number three, limit the number of skinned mesh renderers. You'll remember earlier I was talking about how maybe your animation time is taking up a lot of time. That's exactly the problem that I was running into. I had potentially hundreds of animated models on the screen at the same time on a mobile device and it just ran absolutely terribly. The reason for this is that skin mesh rendering is done on the CPU. So it's a CPU that's modifying the vertex positions of all of the meshes. This is something that can be highly parallelized, which means that it's really a better job for the GPU, the video card. This technique is called GPU skinning and it removes the need for the skin mesh render and allows us to use a normal mesh render instead with a special shader on it that will do the manipulation of the vertex positions, meaning that all that happens on the GPU instead of on the CPU. Unity understands that this is a problem and actually gave us some tool in 2018 that would allow us to batch skinned mesh renders by using GPU vertex manipulation instead of doing it on the CPU. So you just have a mesh with some special shader and some properties that would get adjusted at runtime and that would animate your mesh for you. I had a really hard time using this. I really couldn't figure out how to make it work even, and their documentation wasn't very good. And I didn't understand the concept extremely well whenever I was first working on it. Honestly, I still don't. So there's a link in the description if you do want to check that one out. It is free and it's on GitHub. It's available for everybody. What I did was purchase this asset from the asset store called Mesh Animator. Again, I don't know the guy who made this. They did a really good job on it though. I've got an affiliate link down in the description below, but I wasn't like paid to promote this for him. It just really gave me a great benefit in my game when I couldn't figure out how to use the Unity tool. It was really easy to integrate. And once I did this, I have now a mesh renderer instead of a skinned mesh renderer on my zombies and they got moved and manipulated on the GPU instead. And that reduced my animation time to almost zero because all of this animation is done on the GPU. That's not technically called an animation anymore. This increased the load on the GPU and significantly reduced the load on the CPU. There are some trade-offs to doing it this way. Number one is it uses a lot more memory and the higher FPS animations you want use even more memory. So if you have only a few animated models on the screen at a time, probably this isn't gonna be the optimization technique that you need to use. If you have hundreds or thousands of animated models on the screen at the same time, then this is something that you could take a look at that would really improve your FPS. Tip number four, use the job system where it makes sense. You may have heard of the concept of dots or data oriented tech stack. The job system is only one piece of that and it's really the least experimental one. I think it's actually fully released, meaning it's a stable addition to the Unity engine. The concept of this job system is we can use multiple threads to do something that we need to do. Whenever writing C-sharp code, by default, it's only gonna run on one thread, meaning if you have a 12 or 16 core processor, you're only using one of the 16 or 12 available cores. There are other ways besides the job system to do multi-threading in C-sharp, but the job system is a way Unity gives us to safely do some stuff that normally can only be executed on the main thread, meaning we can do things like physics.raycast or physics.sphercast on multiple CPU threads, which really can improve your FPS. Let me give you an example. In my game, I have ranged enemies that need to pick a location around the player that has line of sight to the player that is some distance away. So to do that, I pick a point around the player. I then do a sphere cast from wherever that point is to the player and determine did that hit something or did it hit the player? If it hit the player, great, we have line of sight. If not, I need to choose a different location and try again. It's a relatively simplistic algorithm, but that's what I ended up with. I could have dozens of these ranged enemies in the game alive at the same time. This made the FPS come to a crawl on some of these mobile devices because they couldn't do 50 sphere casts every frame or every X number of frames if I throttled it, along with all the other stuff that's going with the pathfinding and the attacking, animating, GPU stuff, all of that was just too much. So what I did was jobified this code to make it where it would run across all the available threads on that device. 
This made it so there was virtually no overhead instead of this huge chunk of time happening on the main thread that got split across however many threads were available and it made it go extremely quickly. Not all code should be done this way because it is a little bit more complicated to write it this way. There's also some overhead whenever we're dealing with multiple threads because we need to synchronize those threads and then come back to the main thread at some point. That's why I'm saying use a job system where it makes sense. Only when you are doing something that needs to be parallelized because you're going to do some expensive operations all at the same time they need to be done let's say in a frame, only in those cases should you consider, okay, let's jobify this thing. Those use cases are the ones that make the most sense to turn into a jobs type of job. Tip number five, reduce the complexity of your canvases. Maybe you're like me and you thought, oh, the UI is virtually free to render because there's not that much going on there and it's not really that complicated of a thing. That's not correct. The UI ends up being an extremely complex part of your game. The way I initially did my UI that I had to completely scrap and start over from scratch was I had a bunch of really nested transforms. So I'd have like, I don't know, 13, 14 deep transforms. And whenever you would modify one of those, it makes the entire canvas recalculate what's going on there basically. And whenever I was animating these, first off, I was using the animator. Don't use the animator on your UI. Use a tweening library. There's lean tween that's for free. You can make your own if you really want, but Lean Tween's free. Might as well use it. Anyway, whenever you're using the animator, it also makes, anytime you're moving anything, it has to recalculate the entire canvas every frame, which is why you're not supposed to do it. It's very slow. Couple that with having an extremely complicated deep one where I'm gonna animate some stuff back and forth. The simple kind of slide this in, slide this out animations that I was doing would go at like 10 FPS when there was nothing else happening. It was the main menu. There was nothing besides a the canvas there and it would, perform so poorly. So as they say, keep it simple. Silly. In general, Unity recommends that you don't have extremely nested transforms. So on the UI, there's no difference there. Don't have extremely nested transforms if you can help it. Second piece of that, don't use the animator on the UI. Terrible for your performance. Use something like Lean Tween instead. As long as we're here, I've got one more bonus tip. You can batch your canvases. So if you have some like sprite pack or something that you got and you're using 15 of those sprites, let's say on your UI, what you can do is combine all of those into a single texture. Using a sprite editor, you can then slice up that 15 packed textures into one texture and use that on your canvas. If you then split your canvases by each one's only using one texture, then each canvas will only take one draw call, ideally. So when I was really trying to optimize my draw calls, my canvas was taking like 30, 40 draw calls. If you batch your entire canvas with one texture, you can reduce the canvas draw calls to down to one. All right, to recap the five tips. Number one, inspect the profiler. If you're not inspecting the profiler, you're gonna optimize the wrong thing that why waste time doing something that's only gonna optimize like 1% of your frame time when something's taking 15% of your frame time. Number two, batch, batch, batch as much as possible, use the same material, use the same shader, combine meshes as much as possible. Number three, remove skinned mesh renders as much as possible. If you have a lot of objects that all share the same material, those are great candidates to use some kind of animated mesh like Mesh Animator or the tool that Unity gives us. Number four, use a job system where it makes sense. If you have some piece of code that's highly parallelizable, then you can use the job system to get a bunch of stuff done in the same frame across multiple threads. Remember that what I did was parallelize the sphere casting for my ranged enemies to get line of sight of the player. And that greatly reduced the amount of time each frame spent on trying to find that line of sight. Number five, simplify your canvases. Do not have hugely nested transforms that are moving around that makes it where the UI system ends up running really slowly and can really drain your FPS at an unreasonable amount. And the bonus tip, batch your canvases too. Combine as many sprites as possible into a single texture and use that one texture on your canvas. And remember, there are a lot of other optimization techniques. These are just the top five that I used in my game that provide the biggest benefit when I was doing my first optimization pass. My game is far from perfect. There's a lot of areas I can still improve on the optimization and the polish front. So I'm just sharing those tips that 
I found useful so far. I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Every one of you is helping this channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people, and that means more people are making their game development dreams become a reality. If you want to support this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash academy, choose which tier is right for you, get a voice shout out starting at the awesome tier, and some other cool perks at the tremendous and phenomenal tier level. Speaking of those awesome tier supporters, I have Andrew Bowen, Gerald Anderson, Autumn K, Matt Parkin, and Paul Barry. Thank you all for your support. I am so grateful. The key thing to remember when you are doing performance profiling is understand what is your performance target. For me, it was 60 FPS. For you, maybe it's only 30. If you're meeting that performance target, don't waste your time optimizing something that you're already meeting the performance target. It's once you start having trouble meeting that performance target on the hardware that you want it to run on. That's important to check too. If I have this powerful gaming PC and I'm getting 60 FPS and I throw it on a phone and I get 10 FPS, I definitely need to optimize it some more. If you want me to do some deep dives on some of these topics, go ahead and leave me a comment down below about which topics you found really interesting and that you'd like to hear more about. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. Remember, there's new videos posted every tutorial Tuesday, and I'll see you next week.